This is WENY News. Hey, thanks for clicking on the webcast. I'm Kelly Meyer. Here's the latest from WENY News and the Star Gazette. People in Tioga County, New York, got a scare last night when they were told to evacuate following a potential water hazard in a nearby dam. Officials say this was a false alarm and the message was only programmed for future use. But the potential water hazard itself wasn't a test. Last night, members of the Richford Fire Department started passing out flyers, letting residents in the area know about a potential water hazard involving the Valley View Pond Dam. The fire department, police officers, emergency management, and local elected officials all met with concerned residents last night to explain the situation. And officials plan to begin the process of shifting water from Valley View Pond early this morning in an effort to reduce the water hazard at the dam. For more info on this developing story, go to WENY.com. An activist in the fight against bringing natural gas storage facilities to Seneca Lake is going to jail. Jeremy Alderson from Hector was sentenced on Wednesday to 15 days in jail on a trespassing charge. The man was offered 120 hours of community service but declined, opting for jail time instead. According to our media partner, the Star Gazette, Alderson was sentenced in connection with the September 6, 2012 protest at the gate of the Energy LP facility in the town of Reading. This has since merged with Crestwood Midstream of Texas, which has been the focus of recent protests. Alderson is currently serving his sentence in the Schuyler County Jail. And one of the suspects in the case admits they shackled the girls and intended to turn them into slaves. That's in the case of the Amish abduction of the girls last week. At their preliminary hearing yesterday, investigators told the court Nicole Vasey admitted she and boyfriend Stephen Howells Jr. got the girls to their car with an offer to pet the dog and Howells shoved the 7- and 12-year-old sisters in. Basie says they released the girls about 24 hours after taking them because they were frightened by news reports. And moving on to our next story, the city of Elmira is looking at ways to keep the city brighter for cheaper. According to the Star Gazette, Elmira City Council is to vote next week on using detailed XSP series street lights, that's LED street lights, to replace the old high-pressure sodium lights. According to an issue of Architecture Week, these lights cut energy consumption by almost as much as half. City Council will vote on the LED lighting standard when they meet this Monday at 7 p.m. on the second floor of Elmira City Hall. And at about 11 percent of the 4,000 city-owned streetlights in Elmira have already been converted to LEDs so far. Now here's Ryan Bells with today's forecast. Ryan. Good morning, Kelly, and happy Friday, Twin Tears. It's looking like... A decent end of the work week and going into the weekend. We're going to see a foggy start to the day out there. If you were tuning in to our Good Morning Twin Tiers this morning, you saw I had a hard time seeing out there because there was so much fog. We have visibility between a quarter and a half a mile out there, so do be careful this morning if you're headed out. Fog will burn off throughout the day today, and we're going to see yet another day of isolated showers today and tomorrow. Not an all-day washout event. Just make sure you have the umbrella handy if you're headed out and about today and tomorrow. Behind those isolated showers, for Sunday and into early next week, partly sunny skies and even some mostly sunny skies return to the forecast for the end of August. Can you believe it? We're already wrapping up the month of August. Like I mentioned, visibility is across the area right now. We're looking at three miles in Bradford, five miles in Williamsport, zero here in Elmira and Binghamton, and one mile in Syracuse. So the visibility all across the area is quite low, especially right here in the Twin Tiers. We're talking about, like I mentioned, a quarter to a half a mile visibility. Your satellite and radar, we're looking at showers to our west, even some showers starting to develop in western portions of Pennsylvania. We're going to run the risk of a scattered shower or two throughout the day today, even a possible rumble of thunder as these showers move through. Otherwise, we're going to stay mostly cloudy for your Friday. We're going to warm it up to a 5-degree guarantee today, 80 degrees with a possible shower, otherwise partly to mostly cloudy skies. Mostly cloudy skies will continue into tonight, and we run the risk, again, of a slight shower, nothing too major with lows bottoming out in the lower 60s. Your future track mapping out your next few days for you. Friday morning, right now, we're going to stay dry for the most part to start off the day. Mostly cloudy skies, and then we run the risk for some shower activity moving in later today and then into overnight hours tonight. We're going to see mostly cloudy skies and the slight chance of an isolated shower. For your Saturday, we're going to start off mostly cloudy, decreasing clouds throughout the day. We're going to see partly cloudy skies by Saturday night. But again, we run the risk of an isolated shower one more day, and then we dry it out the next few days. Looks like a nice stretch after tomorrow. Then going into tomorrow night, we're going to clear it out. We're going to see partly cloudy skies Saturday night before we go into Sunday. It's that time of the year where people are headed back to school, and actually I have to wish good luck to my friend Danny. She's headed off to Boston University. This one's for you, Danny. 
So there you go. Good luck at Boston. I know you'll do great. Stay in touch. Now, here's your first warning seven day forecast, mapping it out for you. 77 tomorrow, an isolated shower, otherwise, mostly cloudy skies to start off today, then turning partly cloudy. Sunday, sun and clouds starting to warm it right back up. 79, 80, mostly sunny skies Monday, even warmer Tuesday and Wednesday. Look at that. Low to mid 80s, 85 Wednesday, sunny and warm. Nice stretch there, and then rain. Well, it moves back in on Thursday with some scattered showers and storms in the forecast. Kelly? All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Well, for the latest news, weather, and sports, be sure to watch WENY News at noon, 5, 36, and 11. And don't forget to pick up a copy of today's Star Gazette. I'm Kelly Meyer. Have a great day.